here again? Hello, Celeste. How'd you find me? Well, it wasn't difficult since you yelled, I'm going fishing, and then you left tr muddy tracks out of our house and down here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wondered what you were doing digging yet last night. Hey, I found some really, really good night crawlers in our yard. I mean, that fertilizer, that's, that's really working on you. They're pretty big. The fertilizer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Special, special formula. I thought you were digging up the bot. Oh, oh, you were digging up the worms at like the bot. Never mind. It might have been. I mean, I was catching worms in the process. But... I'm not going to implicate myself in a crime. Nope, don't do that. So tonight, do, we, do you want to tell them what we're doing tonight? Yes, um, on top of fishing. Ooh, oh, you cut a bit. No, he unhooked himself. himself. Okay, thank you, thank you. I like it when they do that. Really? It makes it a lot easier on me. I guess you don't have to pick out. So yeah, Morgan just throws them back. So I do. Anyway, so they might as well throw themselves back. Yep. Works for me. So yeah, we are showing you guys. Horror no, Hotel. That's it. That's it. Yes. I know it by a different name. Yeah, so it is City of the Dead slash Horror Hotel. It's a 1960 film. The reason it is a slash different name is because it was released, uh, it, it was City of the Dead when it was made, and then the U.S. version cut out some of the lines that, you know, the witch says in the beginning and some other dialogue. They didn't find it, you know, appropriate for... U.S. audiences, they didn't think they'd vibe with it, so they cut that out, and the cut version is called Horror Hotel. Yes. Which is actually a pretty apt name because later in this episode, we are going to show you our haunted hotel that we went to in Salem, Massachusetts. Did we ever figure out exactly what went on? Oh, they got my worm. See, this is why they like me. You see what? You look at the Celeste. You see them all Oh, the yeah. Water? They're very excited. Yes. There's like a whole bunch of them. They're really Because they know they can get the worm away from me. That's exactly what it is. No, I, I'm joking. They know that I feed them, though, too. Sometimes I just like to come down here and feed them. Like, yeah. like people do pigeons in the park. Morgan likes to feed fish. I do. I do. I like to feed them lots of things. They, these guys have a good diet. <laughs> so, um, anyway, um, yeah, we had a whole bunch of mishaps in trying to figure out the uh, actual haunted portion of that hotel. As you can tell, we were somehow we had a few too many potions, and uh, like that potions, yeah. and um, it <laughs> impaired our judgment and our ability to figure out what was going on a little bit. But oh, it was I still saw fun. The seven gables that night. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> the oh yeah. Was comfy. Really yeah, was. Morgan ended up sleeping in the bathtub. Which I didn't and the remember closet. until Celeste was like, um, there's a pillow and bed sheets in here. And yeah. Thinking, oh, that's right. And yeah, she had a bad potion and threw up in our closet. Yes, but see, it's, well, I had to because the bathroom, you were in the bathroom. <laughs> Thankfully, there was a trash can on my way to that big closet. So I was in a little bit of a bind, didn't know what to do. But see, it's not a vacation, Celeste, until I'm puking. Yeah, it was fun, but yeah, we decided to mix up a few potions and it got a little oh, yeah. crazy with it. Um, but anyway, besides that, Horror Hotel, so the fun thing about this it, movie is that it is set in Massachusetts in a small town where this college student, Nan, is going to research witches and witchcraft. So we thought it would be perfect. It also has Christopher Lee, who of course we love, and oh, there's a fish! It's a fishy. It's a fishy. It's a little Show me your fish. It's a bitty bluegill. Whoa, 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 buddy. Got a nice new lip ring. <laughs> oh, it's and so cute. Yeah, my worm. This one will be easy, though. See, it's right on the edge. There, there we go. And so, yeah, I don't fish because it makes me sad, but I don't mind if other people fish around me. Now I'm just praying one of them don't swallow the hook while she's here because that's going to be a worm. Yeah. I'm going to tell you to walk away. Cause I'm gonna, you kind of almost perform surgery. That's why I have a multi-tool in there with um, hemostats and things like that. It's to get the hook out. I try to never leave the hook in them if I can help it. Fish will survive though if you leave the hook in them. And sometimes it is just best if you look in their mouths and you can't see where it's at. Like if it's deep down in there, they'll be okay. It's not recommended, but you try to get it out. But at the same time, there is only so much you can do. So it's a case-by-case -case basis. And I am waiting for my bass here. 
Yeah, she thinks she's gonna catch a bass, which I don't think exists in this lake, so we'll see. We'll see. I have pictures. I did take pictures, and I caught a perch the other day that was like eight inches. Obviously, I threw them back, but still. Tell me it don't exist. Maybe I'll get a crappy fish. I don't know. Is that what they call crappies? <laughs> crappy, crappy, crap. I think they're all crappy. I call them crappy. They're crappy fish. <laughs> Tastes good. I think crappy. it's a crappy. I think it is crappy. Okay, I'm going to eat the bluegills. So, Ed, do you know anything about bluegills? I don't. I know they taste good. Really? Beer batter. Hey, you know, we live in Wisconsin, so, I mean, what else can I say? Were you a buddy guy? I don't know. Do you eat crappies? <laughs> I think I have. I mean, I've had perch, I've had crappy fish. <laughs> the trick to catching bass is you got to make them think that it's a real worm. Sometimes I like to like they're really, really big, so I let the line out like this. They get you? Oh, get so you. Morgan. Oh, God. Here we go. What? What? Morgan? No. Yeah. What do you call a rabbit that works in a hotel? What? A, a bunny hop? A bell hop. Uh, another blue girl. That was a terrible joke. What I can't is? even admit that one was really bad. What, what was it called again? I wasn't even paying attention. A bell hop. Oh. Here we go. See, look, he hooked himself right under his gill, and I was oh. able to just get him off real quick. You know, this reminds oh, me of that episode of King of the Hill where Hank goes fishing and catches fish after fish. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that episode. It is. Anyway, we'll let you guys start this movie. We do. It's a good movie. It is really, it's actually one of my favorite classic horror movies. It's got a good plot. It's interesting. It's got some weird characters. Yeah. So we think you'll enjoy it, and uh, please enjoy our other footage from Salem that was not related directly oh to the witches. So we cover the witches, and this is the other stuff that we did that was, I think, a, lo a lot of fun. So enjoy. Elizabeth Selwyn. Consorted with a witch 
Elizabeth Selwyn. No. Burn the witch. <laughs> In the year of our Lord, 1692, we, the people of Whitewood, Massachusetts, condemn thee as a witch. May the flames cleanse thy soul of its evil, of its lust for blood, but may they bring about the death of Abigail Adams. I've said, little is known today, of the actual practice of witchcraft in the 17th century New England. Superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Wading around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. The tortured souls cried out in agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn, witch, burn, witch, burn, burn, burn. Think that crazy beat. be all for today. Tomorrow will be my concluding lecture on the history of witchcraft in 17th century New England. I shall bring along some illustrations which I'm sure will interest you all. I'll bring the matches. <laughs> Maitland! Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. That'll be all. Well, how could you? He takes it all so darn seriously. He's got you all hypnotized. Oh, Miss Barlow. Yes, Professor. Can I see you for a moment, please? What about our date? Look, um, I'll wait for you outside. Huh? Yes, Professor. Rather a difficult young man, that. I fear that you are more of an attraction to him than my poor efforts. However, Reading through your papers, Miss Barlow, they show a very sound appreciation of the subject. I want to go to New England to do my senior paper. Mm -hmm. They're really quite good, you know. Oh, I know quite well. Some first-hand research. I want to get the atmosphere. Find out how widespread witchcraft really was. What the witches were really like. That might take a little time, you know. Well, I have the time. My brother and I were going to spend our vacation with our cousins. What I'd really like to do to get a room in the smallest, oldest town in New England I can find. Check through all the town hall records, recheck the libraries, talk to the Puritan descendants, make a really thorough investigation. Your brother is a professor of science, Miss Barlow. I hardly think he'd be very interested in the history of witchcraft. Then I'd go alone. You don't think he'd object to that? You leave Richard to me. He's picking me up here for lunch. Hello, oh, Bill. Professor Barlow. Nan here? Yeah, she's in there with him. 
Well, I don't like you getting mixed up in this witchcraft business. Why not? It's only part of a history course. Professor Barlow. Yeah? Before you go in there, could, could I have a word with you? Sure. Well, it's about Nan and me. Oh. If you're really serious about this, I happen to know of a town in New England. As a matter of fact, it's the identical place where the events occurred that I mentioned in today's lecture, Whitewood. It's uh, quite a small place. It's a little bit up the beaten track, so maybe these directions will help you. Thank you. I think you might very well find what you're looking for there. I happen to know the woman who owns the inn at Whitewood. Her name is Newless, Mrs. Newless. So you just tell her I sent you. Raven's Inn, Whitewood. What's Whitewood? Now, Dick, don't be too upset, but uh, I'm going to change my plans for the vacation. Change your plans? Yes. Going to a place called Whitewood for a week or so to do some research. Who are you? What about Cousin Sue? Well, she's expecting you for a birthday party on the 17th. She'll never forget. I can still easily make it by then. This is important. My term paper's got to be good. It could mean a scholarship. Man, I've made all the arrangements. Come on, Dick. You'll have a good time without me. My mind's made up. I'm going to Whitewood. But surely any good encyclopedia will give you all the nonsense you want to know about witchcraft. Witchcraft is not nonsense, Barlow. I'm sorry, Driscoll. Witchcraft. Black magic sorcery. To me, it's nothing but fairy tale mumbo jumbo. I'm a scientist, Driscoll. I believe what I can see, what I can feel and touch. The basis of fairy tales is reality. The basis of reality is fairy tales. Did you ever meet a witch, Driscoll? Perhaps. Oh, come on. You're an historian. No witch ever survived the burning at the stake for all that pact with the devil. In 1692, Elizabeth Selwyn went to the stake. She was buried in a churchyard in New England. And yet, three years later... Yeah. Three years later, a new wave of blood sacrifices broke out in the village that had condemned her. The daughters of the elders who had condemned her were themselves found murdered with every last drop of blood drained from their bodies. And afterwards, people came forward to testify that they had actually seen Elizabeth Selwyn. Oh, stop. This would be more effective at midnight, with howling winds and crashing thunder, and even then it wouldn't frighten anyone. Dick, I'm sorry, Professor Driscoll. That's all right, Miss Barlow. You won't be the first person to have scoffed at the subject. Honey, when you get to, um, where is it? Whitewood. Ah, yes, Whitewood. Well, send me a picture postcard of a witch. If possible, autographed. Now, uh, let's have some lunch, eh? I'm sorry, I have a date. Nan, darling, I still don't see why you have to go after this Whitewood place. Now, I thought we were going to have some time together during this vacation. You know I want to be with you. It's just this is important. Look, what the heck can you find that hasn't been found before? I don't know. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the oh, subject. Oh, what new outlook can there be? You're a science student, honey. You know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstitious people burning silly old women. But suppose the women weren't silly. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. A pact that could have supernatural power. Oh, come on. What kind of power? I don't know. Oh, look, it's no use, Bill. We both tried our hardest to talk her out of going. Do you really think she will find anything worthwhile? Well, I think we have to respect her desire to find something new, even if we, even if we don't agree with the subject. Agree with it? I've never heard so much nonsense as that guy Driscoll talks in all my life. Well, here I am, all packed. Oh, I suppose there's nothing I can say will stop you from going, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the car. I still hope you change your mind, Nan. Don't worry, darling. I'll be back as quick as I can, and I'll write. Well, don't forget me altogether, huh? I won't. Give Sue my love, and don't forget we have a date at her party. Bye, darling. Hello. Hello. Where are we, Black? We are. You're never going to get it. You might be able to get it. I don't know. I know where we're at, but. We're in Salem. Yeah. 
Yes, we are. We're back home, mm -hmm. visiting our ancestors, yeah, and relatives, and the traditional partner estate. Yes, that is not true. Excuse me, can you help me? I seem to be lost. Sure, if I can. I'm looking for the Wamport Road. Wamport Road? Hardly anyone uses that anymore. Well, my friend gave me the directions. Uh, take Road 28A, turn onto the Wamport Road, bear left at the fork through to Whitewood. Whitewood? Am I that far away? No, ma'am, not far. Not many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays. If I were you, I'd... Uh, if, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a hurry. Which way is it? Well, follow this road about two miles. You come to a fork. There'll be a sign, Wamport Road. Turn left, keep straight. There'll be white. Thank you very much. Wamport Road? Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I, too. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. I think the Highway Commission would do something about these roads. Watch out. Here comes another bump. 
What is your mission in Whitewood? Mission? Well, I'm going there to do some research on witchcraft. Professor Driscoll gave us some very interesting lectures on the subject. I'm going there to get some original source material. Do you know Whitewood? I've known it for many years. Do you go there often? Fairly often. Oh, then you must know the Raven's Inn. I shall be resting there. Oh, so shall I. Oh, my name's Nan Barlow. My name's Jethro Keene. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Just like a picture out of a history book. I feel as though I were in the 17th century. Why hasn't Whitewood been written about? Well, it's off a beaten path. You tourists come here. For Whitewood, time stands still. Look at that church. It must have been beautiful. What a shame they let it get so run down. Straight on? Yes, follow the road around. Oh, there it is. What a lovely old building. 17th century, at least. How picturesque can you get? Right by the graveyard. Yes, it has not been used for more than 200 years. Any witches buried there? There are indeed. All in a section of unconsecrated ground. Spooky, isn't it? Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. I hope Mrs. Newell's has that room. I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Newless? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm Nan Barlow. I was told I might find a room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was recommended by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Perhaps you know him. That will be all, Lottie. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Unfortunately, Lottie cannot talk. I've often told her not to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. The hotel is quite full. Oh, the guests are never about at this time of the day. Well, I'm a student of Professor Driscoll's. He told me if I mentioned his name, I'd have no trouble. Well, there is a room I could let you have. It's just off the lobby. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Newless, that plaque... Is it true that Elizabeth Selwyn was really burnt here for being a witch? She was. And do you believe she was a witch? Come along. I'll show you to your room. I hope you will be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a nice room. The previous occupants have always found it most agreeable. Well, if there's anything you should need, just ring the bell for me at the desk. Thank you.
and so many months. I've counted the days to this holiday. So have the others. It wasn't easy for some of my guests to get here. Many had to travel vast distances. I was lucky. The last few miles were enchanting. Miss Barlow is very good company. You must be tired, Jethro. Your room is ready. And the festivities. I am prepared. Oh, Mrs. Nellis, I uh, thought I'd have a short look around town. I won't be gone long. I think you'll find the church interesting. Unfortunately, it no longer has a congregation. He will be pleased. I'm told this was once a house of worship. It is still a house of worship. I am the reverend of this church. As long as the breath of life is within me, this house shall remain God's house. It must have been a beautiful building. <clears throat> me, it is still beautiful. I'm sorry. What a shame the people have let it fall into such a state. Strangers rarely come to Whitewood. Who are you? I'm Nan Barlow. I'm staying at the Raven's Inn. Why have you come to Whitewood? Well, because I'm interested in witchcraft. Young woman, leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. For 300 years, the devil has hovered over this city, made it his own. The people in it are his. Evil has triumphed over good here. Look at my church. I have no parish. No one worships here. His is the power. What power? Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. <laughs> We haven't been open long. You have some very interesting things here. Yes, they, they belong to my grandmother. When she died, I came back to sort things out. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you don't live here? No, my family lived here for generations, but I've just been back a few weeks. Would you like to have a look around? Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to frighten you when I came in. It's just that all the people I've met here have acted like I'm a person from another world. They don't see many strangers here. And I had the most... Well, unusual experience with the Reverend. He barred my way from the church. And he talked to me about a curse. And he warned me to leave Whitewood. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Does he often act that way? He's my grandfather. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's happened before with strangers. Oh, 
the lack of parishioners and loss of his sight has made him bitter and suspicious. I'm afraid what with him and the town, I, I was very scared. When I saw your lights, I made a dash for them. I'm glad you did. Um, do you have any books or pamphlets on witchcraft? You do, don't you? A friend of mine. Well, we, we have a collection gathering dust, but why on earth would you be interested in... Oh, I'm sorry, it's really none of my business. No, that's all right. I'm studying it in college, and I've come here to write my term paper. Well, just wait. I'll see what I can find. That's Elizabeth Selwyn, burned as a witch, March 3rd, 1692. Yes, I know. I saw the plaque in the lobby of the hotel. You were staying at the Ravens Inn? Yes. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Alan Driscoll? Yes, do you know him? No, but my grandfather speaks of him. His family come from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I think this will do for a start. A lovely locket. May I see it? I believe it's quite old. Is. You're very lucky. I'm even more lucky to have found this. A treatise on devil worship in New England. It must be a very rare book. I'm afraid I couldn't afford to buy it. You can borrow it, if you like. Oh, could I? That would be wonderful. I promise I'll bring it back in a few days. You're very welcome, Miss... Uh... Barlow. Nan Barlow. Nan Barlow. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. And we are standing in front of the high school, huh? Yes, this was the high school fan, of course, of the project. Uh, it was a school. It was shut down, I believe, conveniently in 1992. So it's no longer open or being used. But it must be used for something. It's like maybe a or something. Yeah, but it's no longer a functioning high school or a school. It was a middle school at the time. So... Pretty cool those apartments. I live in. Yeah, it's place. a really neat looking building. It's it's got a really imposing uh, exterior, which I really like. So it's cool tracking down these things. Going, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. That's from this scene. Uh, so fun bit of trivia. Get them goofy people looking at You okay, Morgan? Okay, should we go? Yeah, we probably should. All right, let's get. This is the Ropes Mansion, which is one of the famous filming locations for Hocus Pocus. This is actually Allison's house. Uh, the first Halloween party they had, this was Allison's house. You'll recognize some of this from the movie. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So to continue our tour of Hocus Pocus. Yes. You may recognize this in the background. Can I sing it? I mean, am I able to sing that? Ah, put a spell well on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to actually sing with the sound, so I'll just mouth it so that I won't get so in trouble. Gone. Yes, this is the famous town hall that was used for the party scene in the movie. Yes. With the Sanderson sisters singing, I uh, put a spell on you. Yes. One of my favorite scenes in the movie. Oh, I think it's great. Too. Mine too. So yeah. I have to get lovely. gremlins running around here. It's a beautiful building, too, so it, it, it's so colonial. It stands it. out for yes. sure. So anyway, that's it. I think thus concludes our yes. tour of the Hocus Pocus locations that we can find around here. So. Bye. Bye. So Morgan, what made you, uh, Want to come fish today? I don't know. It's a stress relief, generally. They almost got my worm, Celeste. You know, you guys, you act like I don't feed you, and I do feed you. 
She will act like they're your pets. She acts like they're her I pets. Talk, I come, they listen to me. These fish know my like deepest, darkest secrets. Some of them. I don't even know your deepest, darkest secrets. Some of them. Not all of them. Some of them, I think, would make your hair turn white. Oh. Okay. That's why I don't tell you these things. They listen to the things that I don't tell you. These poor fish might need some therapy. <laughs> yeah. That's why I try to feed them good. So one of the things, um, we hope you guys are enjoying this movie. I know I really love it. There's some interesting trivia that goes along with this. Um, so it was the, uh, it was originally written as a pilot. It was supposed to be for a TV series um, that was supposed to uh, start Boris Karloff, but it yes. ended up never getting made. So they just have the movie. My style, yeah. I <laughs> Meal. I know I cast weird. I don't care. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep telling you some trivia. So, yeah, you, um, you know the line where they're like fierce superstition and jealousy that's spoken by Christopher Lee. That is used in Dracula. <laughs> There's like fierce superstition and jealousy. I love that line. So that is actually from this movie, or Hotel. Put that fin down. Oh, it's a fishy. Yeah, it is. It's another gilly. Bluegill, right? Yep, nope. I don't know. Come here. Come here. It's not a crappy. Is it a crappy bluegill? Nope, it's pumpkin seed. Okay, here, I'm going to show you, Celeste. These okay. are called pumpkin seeds. Do you see how they've got the orange underneath yeah. them and they're spotted? Yep, these are pumpkin seeds. Oh, here, show the shore viewers in case they are interested in fishing. Mm -hmm. Pumpkin seed. And I gave them a nice new look. <laughs> It almost like flapped at me. It did. It did. Don't put that fin down, please, so I can get you. Okay then. There. Woo! Um, and then so some of the lines that were cut out, they cut out a large part of where the witch is talking in the beginning of the movie. Yes. Because she said all this like kind of satanic cursing stuff, and so they uh, decided to omit that. And, um... Oh, yes, he's got a very nice and That was beautiful. You want to kiss him? Um... You want to kiss? <laughs> 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 he just jumped a fish at me. I didn't mean to jump the fish at you. It was either there. I sliced my hand up, Celeste. Thank I you. totally forgot all my trivia, so there it goes right out of my head. That was great. Oh, it's great. Sorry, Celeste. <laughs> I, didn't mean that. I, mean, I just wanted you to give him a kiss. I'm good on kissing the fish. Oh, <laughs> Maybe a frog it. or two. Uh-huh. That's how you get warts. I thought that's how you get a prince. I think it's warts. Oh. Oh, that's not good. What are the other? Yes. There's something big under that pier. You gonna catch it? You gonna try. Shh. Watch Mark and catch a fish. No, I'm trying to beat the bluegill. That's what this is. It's beating the bluegill. So what I'm gathering is that the bluegill are trying to eat the bait and she's tired of catching bluegill. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to prove. I'm going to prove to you that there are... Get them. They get them. Nope. <laughs> and the reason we are out here actually is because we still haven't found a house. <laughs> yeah, we're uh, continuing with our homeless summer. So we are. it's been an adventure. Um, we haven't been able to uh, show you as many movies as we wanted because of that, but it's okay because we will find another place. We haven't gotten our insurance money yet because we have to prove that it was accidental, Morgan. It was an accident. Oh, they got my worm again. So anyway. Then we'll be able to buy a new house and it'll be all good. But right now we're still couch surfing and uh, we had a tent set up over there, which is how the muddy footprints because, you know, she was digging in the yard. Yeah, I don't and know then... if they're going to let us back, but I mean, our yard is still usable. That's exactly yeah. what it was. I went straight from our yard to where we're staying. You know. And we still have all the uh, dead bodies under there that we should probably, you know, move away from and find a new property to begin. Well, I mean, until the insurance agent says something to us about them, I'm not doing it. Yeah, plausible deniability. 
Okay. Something like that. No, no. Anyway. So, yeah, please continue watching this wonderful movie. We're going to go catch, well, Morgan's going to catch some more fish. Hopefully no more bluegill. Oh, there's such a cute little fish down there. It's so little and cute. I'm actually scared to go in the water a little bit because usually when I do uh, fish, like to try to bite my tattoos on my legs. They're very friendly here. They'll nibble on you. Like you'll get the minnows that come at your toes, but I, yeah, it depends on the lake. But sometimes they just bite my tattoos. Anyway, Morgan, you want to come back? Yeah. Go enjoy the movie. I'm going to prove to you that I can catch a bass in this lake. There you go. There's something. There's something. You got nothing. Almost. strange noises in my room. Oh, possibly the water and the pipes. This is a very old inn. No, it seemed to be coming from the cellar underneath. I hardly think so, Miss Barlow. The cellars do not extend beneath your room. But then why is there a trap door in the floor? The ground was filled in many years ago to strengthen the foundations of the building. But I'm sure but I... if you insist, I will come and see them. I don't hear anything. Just a few minutes ago. Never mind, I'm sorry. You're welcome. But you can see for yourself there is no ring in the trapdoor because there is no reason to lift it. There is nothing underneath but earth. <laughs> More towels. I haven't used mine. They're quite clean. Lottie, I've told you before not to bother the guests. Miss Barlow, I thought you might care to join the others. I will as soon as I finish my notes. I'll put some clothes on and join them. A treatise on devil worship in New England. Well, do you find this interesting? Why, it's fascinating. The things I've learned. I bet you don't know the half of it. And you live right here on a spot where the witches were actually burnt. Listen to this. On Candlemas Eve, February 1st, in the year 1692, a coven of witches, a coven that's 13, some men, some women, whose power came from the devil, gathered beneath the Raven's Inn to perform a black mass in the honor of Lucifer. The witch, Elizabeth Selwyn, later to be burnt at the stake, marked a young girl for sacrifice by obtaining an object of value belonging to her, with which to call her, and leaving in its place a dead bird and a sprig of woodbine. The witches sacrificed her on the altar and drank her blood at the hour of 13. What's the hour of 13? Well, personally, I have never heard a clock strike more than 12. No. How about joining the dancing? In a little while, I promise. Oh, by the way, I seem to have misplaced my locket. I remember having it in my room, and now it's disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll ask Lottie. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it was stolen. It's just 
I remember having it on the dresser, and now it's gone. I would appreciate it. Of course. I'll look into it immediately. Lottie, I have warned you too often about annoying our guests. If you disobey me again, I shall turn you out. And if I turn you out, there will be no place for you anywhere. You do understand, Lottie, don't you? Ah, Miss Barlow. I'm afraid Lottie is nowhere to be found, but I will inquire about your locket first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Where is everybody? Most of the other guests have gone to services. Services on the 1st of February? Candlemas Eve. The night when the witches mocked the rituals of the church. Are you all right, Miss Barlow? Yes, quite. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Barlow. Thank <laughs> you. 
Elizabeth Selwyn. Oh, no! Eleven. No! Let go! Let go! show up. She, she probably met a good-looking he-witch and was bringing him along to the party, only they broomstick blew a gasket. Well, it's not like Nan to be late for anything. Aren't you a bit worried about her? Oh, she'll be here. I'm sure she'll make it. Oh, it's probably her now. Well, you answer the door and I'm going to put a record on for some dancing. All right. Hi, Dick. Phil. Oh, what's the matter? You expecting somebody else? Oh, yes, Nan. Look, come in, come in. Well, Nan, didn't you hear yet? We made a date to meet here before she left for Whitewood. Well, she probably got held up. Look, look, give me your coat, huh? Ah, Nan was never late for anything in her life. Relax. Take it easy. Join the party. She'll be here. Dick. Dick, I haven't had a letter from Nan in over two weeks now. Well, she's probably been too busy working on her paper. No, no, there's something wrong. I know it. Look, will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Ring up Whitewood, will you? Ask him, ask him if she's left. You serious? Yes, I am. Okay. On a long distance, I'd like to speak with Miss Nan Barlow at the Ravens Inn, Whitewood. No, I, uh, I don't know the phone number. What? Didn't she give you the phone number? Oh, I know, but uh, that's my sister. They say there's no such place as the Raven's Inn. But that's crazy. She's staying there. Give me the police. Hello. Hello. So we are here at the house of Seven Gables. This is one of the super cool landmark homes in Salem at the Boston Harbor. It really is. It, it was built, I believe, in 1667 by a merchant. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's really cool about it is it was featured in the 1800s novel by Nathaniel Hawthorne of the same name, House of the Seven Gables. Yep. And it's a gothic no romance novel. It uses the house almost as a character that's yes. part of the um, essence of the book. And it was also a book that greatly inspired Lovecraft's writing. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm admiring, I'm loving the yes. architecture on this. You know, We're going to give you a view of the whole thing where you can see some of the seven gables that it was named for. 
but I love this house. It has great energy. Apparently it has really impressive grounds and gardens as well, mm -hmm. I which we so. won't be seeing today, sure. but we're excited to show you the exterior. Yes. So, here we go. So this house, very impressive. They run tours out of here, and as you can see, here are several of the aforementioned gables. Let's check out the other side. And yeah, you can see we are right by Boston Harbor, so we are extremely close to being in the water. This is definitely a gothic romance house if I ever saw one. She left in such a hurry, she must have forgotten to return it to you, Miss Russell. She seems such a nice girl, too. Wouldn't have thought she was the sort who'd forget to return a book. We cannot always judge by our first impressions, can we? I'm not usually wrong about the people I lend my books to. Well, perhaps you'll be more careful in future. Thank you for letting me have it. Remember me to your grandfather. Lottie, get out of the way, you clumsy creature. Can I help you? Yes, we're from the sheriff's office. We had a call this evening. A missing person's report from some college kid named Nan Barlow. The party calling said that her last known whereabouts was the Raven's Inn. Nan Barlow, that's strange. Yes, I met her. When did you last see her? About two weeks ago. She came to my shop and, and borrowed this book. It's quite valuable, and so not hearing from her, I decided to come and get it. Mrs. Newless had it. May I? Yes. A treatise on devil worship. I must put this in the report. Peculiar thing some of these college kids do nowadays. Well, thanks for your help. Come on, Charlie. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well? Police sent a car out to the Raven's Inn. And checked out two weeks ago. And get it. Well, neither do I. Look, these are Nan's books and papers. Go through them. See if you can find anything which might give us a lead. I'm going to pay a visit to a colleague of mine.
come in? Well, yes, of course, please do. Can I take your coat? I tried to phone you last night, but I, I guess you weren't in. No, uh, no, I wasn't. Would you care to go in the study? Sit yourself down. Thanks. You take a drink? Ryan soda. Ice, please. Well, what's on your mind? A man's missing. And she has been since the day after she arrived at Whitewood. Really? You quite sure? That's what the police said. Well, what are they doing about it? Carrying out a routine check. I, I don't suppose they can do much more until they've got something definite to go on. Well, I would have thought there was a very great deal more they could do. What? As far as they're concerned, she disappeared two weeks ago and no one in the village seems to know anything about it. What do you come see me for? I thought you might have some ideas. Why did you send her to Whitewood? Because it was the best place for her research. And you suggested she stay at the Raven's Inn. I'm sure, it's the only inn there is. But an unlisted phone number? The inn has its own clientele, Barlow. It doesn't need to advertise. How do you know it so well? Because I was born in Whitewood. I see. You'd have every reason to believe she'd be perfectly safe in going there. I have no reason to suppose that she wouldn't be. Nan struck me as being perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Yeah, I grant you that, but why hasn't she come back or let us know? Look, Barlow, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm quite sure there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing at all. She's probably got absorbed in the subjects and gone off someplace. I wish that all my class had her application. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out where this application led her. I'm going to retrace every step Nan took. I'm either going to find Nan or know what happened to her. Stop you from going. No. I'm not afraid. Afraid? Why? Well, if anything did happen to your sister and somebody else went along to try and find out about it. Same thing might happen to them? Possible. You seem to think something happened to my sister then. No, I just think you're jumping to conclusions, Barlow. Maybe, but uh, I shall find her. Professor Driscoll? Yes. I don't like to disturb you, but may I see you? Well, of course, please come in. Good luck in Whitewood. Thanks. I'm sorry, but did you say he was going to Whitewood? Yes, he is. Silly to be surprised, but uh, I've just come from Whitewood. Really? It's quite a coincidence. My own family happens to come from Whitewood. As a matter of fact, I was born there. Yes, I know. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. I think you know my grandfather, the Reverend Russell. Russell? Oh, yes, of course I do. How long have you been living in Whitewood? Since my grandmother died a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now, how can I help you? I've come about a pupil of yours, Barlow, Nan Barlow. Yes? She came to Whitewood two weeks ago. I met her and liked her, and she told me that she was a student in one of your classes, that you recommended that she stay at the Raven's Inn. That's quite right, I did. Well, that's what I've come to see you about. On the day after she arrived, she disappeared. Later, the police came asking questions. The family were worried. I thought you might have their address. And why do you want their family's address? Because I have something of hers I want to return. Well, you just leave it with me, and I'll make sure they get it safely. Well, I, I don't want to trouble you. If, if you just give me their address. As you wish. Their address is Dorchester Street, 222. Five. She lives with her brother. Matter of fact, he's a colleague of mine. You just met him. He was leaving when you arrived. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm rather a busy man at the moment. Of course. Thank you for your help. Not at all. I hope it achieves something. Well, you will remember me to your grandfather, won't you? Yes, of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Russell. Nan's locket, all right. As far as I know, it's unique. I gave it to her. Where did you get it? The servant at the inn gave it to me. It was strange. I don't think she wanted Mrs. Newless to know I had it. Mrs. Newless? She runs the inn. Well, why did you come here, Miss, uh, Miss Russell? I found this. Professor Driscoll's notepaper. I found it in the pages of a book I lent your sister on her first evening in Whitewood. When she didn't return it, I went to the hotel. What was the book? An old book. A book about witchcraft. 
Do you believe in it, Miss Russell? I don't know. Sometimes I almost think I live with it. Live with it? It's an obsession of my grandfather's. Up till now, I didn't take him very seriously. He's an old man. Now I'm beginning to wonder if what he says isn't true. What does he say? That there's something evil about the village. But on certain nights, the inhabitants leave the streets, close their doors, and stay behind them. That on these nights, the dead come to life. Nights like Candlemas Eve? What do you know about Candlemas Eve? It's in one of Nan's books. I don't believe it. Things like this don't happen today. In Whitewood, I wonder. I'm going to Whitewood tomorrow after classes. I, I can give you a lift. Thank you, but I, I must get back. I can't leave my grandfather alone. He's blind. May I come and see you when I arrive? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a talk with him. Please do. It's the house next to the church. Goodbye. Right. I'll see you at the door. Going to Whitewood? Yes. Would you take me along with you? It's a dark night for walking. You're the Reverend Russell's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. How did you know? I know a great deal about Whitewood. Have you ever been there? None, then. Never seen you. See me as a special privilege, reserved for a chosen few. What does that mean? We'll soon be at Whitewood now. This is as far as I go, you will. descendant of those who are cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. Another day. And tomorrow. The witches. Which way to Wamport Road? Straight ahead. Walk in the road. You see a sign. Turn left. You heading for Whitewood? I am. Many people head this way? Not many. Is this the only way in and out of the town? In this direction, yep. You wouldn't remember by any chance a, a pretty girl in a convertible about a month ago. Varlow girl. Read about her in the papers. Never seen her again. Told the police. Thanks. Could you tell me the way to Whitewood, please? Another one. Straight ahead. Fork in the road. You see a sign, Warmport Road. Turn left. Takes you right in. Well, thanks. Let me warn you, young fella. They don't like strangers in Whitewood. Okay, fine. Thanks very much. Ha <laughs> ha! 
Good evening. Good evening. I'd like a room, please. The inn is closing. Well, I'll only be here a few days. But the inn is closing. When? 
in two days. Well, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to stay until then. If you insist. And could I, could I have the, uh, the same room my, my sister had? It's still available, isn't it? Yes, it's available. Mrs. Lewis, you told the police that my sister checked out. You are mistaken, Mr. Barlow. I told them that on the morning of February 2nd, I went to her room and found it empty, her bed not slept in, her luggage and car gone, and her bill unpaid. Well, you can put the charges on mine. When was the last time you saw her? On the evening of February 1st. It was shortly before midnight. She'd been in the lobby here dancing with some of the guests. She seemed to be enjoying herself. Did any particular guest pay a, a special attention to her? And not that I noticed. Your sister kept very much to herself. You know why she came to Whitewood? It is not my habit to inquire into people's private business. Would the fact that she was, she was investigating witchcraft have antagonized anyone in the village? Hardly. There have been other students here, you know. Besides, your sister was a very agreeable and likable young woman. Well, have you any idea where she might have gone? None. Thank you. Now, may I see the room? As you wish. It is this way. If you should need anything and I am not at the desk, you have only to ring the bell. Thank you. glad you've come. I saw your car outside the Ravens Inn earlier. I wondered what had happened to you. I've been talking with Mrs. Newless, and then I, I took a walk around the village. Find out anything? Everyone here seems to be afraid of something. Then you don't think it's just my imagination? I don't know. Who's to say where imagination ends and truth begins? It's, it's nothing tangible. It's just the way they look at you. I felt it, too. May I see the, uh, the book that Nan borrowed? Yes. I put a marker between the pages where she must have stopped reading. Just sit down and I'll tell my grandfather you're here. Thank you. I warned you, Lucky.
grandfather. This is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, sir? God be with you. Shall we sit where we'll be more comfortable? Here's your chair, grandfather. You must be tired. I am very tired. I have little strength left these days for the fight. Won't you sit down? I'll make some coffee. Fight against what, Mr. Russell? Against the evil that besets this village. The people are creatures of the devil. They know no other god. You mean they worship Satan here? Today? Satanism was never stronger than at the present time. For 200 years, the people of Whitewood have carried out rituals that mock the church's teaching. I find it very hard to believe, sir. Do not doubt, my son. It is real enough. For years, I struggled against the witches. Their master took away my sight. Seems incredible. I have tried to convince others. They, too, found it unbelievable. But I know these people have a pact with the devil. To worship him and do his works. In return, he gives them eternal life. Eternal life? Aye. And to seal this bargain, they must sacrifice a young girl on two nights of the year. When are these nights, sir? Candlemas Eve and the witch's Sabbath. Candlemas Eve, that's, that's February the 1st. And when is the witch's Sabbath? Tonight. Now you know why I came to see you. I had no idea it was so late. May I, may I have a rain check on the coffee? I'd like to have a few words with Miss Nulis again. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. I'll see you to the door. God be with us. Well, Miss Russell, do you think that Nan's disappearance is connected in some way with these uh, witches' ceremonies? Yes. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come back later, if I may. Please do. And my name is Pat. Oh, mine's Richard. I think I feel better now you're here. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay until I find out what's happened to Nan. Take care. Now drink your coffee before it gets cold. You must not see that young man again tonight. Why not? The devil comes in many disguises. I'll get you a spoon. Father, there's a bird in the drawer. It's got an arrow through it. Go and look on the front door. It's a sprig of woodbine. Shut the door. Shut the door. Quick. Father, what does it mean? Now listen, my darling. This is their sign. The witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here. Leave here immediately. Danger. We've got to leave Whitewood at once. Danger? But from what? We've got to leave. Ah! Pat! Please help me! Patricia! Pat! i 
happened, Mr. Russell? The witches. The witches. Have Patricia. Destroy them. Mr. Russell, how? The shadow of the cross. To use the cross. I adjure the old creatures of salt by the living God. shop in America, the Yield Pepper Company, and it's company with an I-E, not a Y, so it's like, okay. Yeah, down by the harbor, there's this unassuming little yellow building that happens to house the oldest candy shop in America. Okay. Did you see that huge jar in there? Yo, oh, yeah. The, what, what were those, the Gibraltars? Yeah. They're about 200 years old. 200 years old, yeah. They said this was uh, founded in about 1830, and it's really cool that we're here at the oldest candy store. Yeah. We love candy. Wait, we can't probably say no. Anyway, forget you heard that. <laughs> I saw candy. I saw fossilized candy, man. I thought the French fries that I find under the back seat were ancient. Nope. Yeah, we actually got something to try. So this is blackjacks. It's the original Salem blackjacks. From the last candy, they used the original recipe. Make it the same way for 200 years now. Yeah, they, oh, oh, they're back in the Anyway, as we were saying, yes. <laughs> Blackjacks, it was one of the most popular candies at the time when this store was open. So we are going to actually try some in front of you. It hasn't been open. We don't know what it's going to taste like. All the faces we make are genuine. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's see. Okay. These look like sticks. You want me to open them? I think I got it. Good. Yeah, made out of molasses. Morgan, would you like one? Yeah. Oh, they're hard. Okay, so this is molasses candy. I happen to love molasses. Mm -hmm. They said it's all natural, healthful, and delicious. Still made from the original recipe and cut by hand. It's made out of sugar, molasses, caramel color, cream of tartar, and cornstarch. Interesting. Now we got some noisy neighbors here. Mm -hmm. Shook my stick at you. Ooh. I wonder if you could make a shiv out of these. I bet you could. Of course, that's what you think of. There's a Morgan for you. She's like, can I turn this into a weapon? I'm gonna stab someone with some old candy. And not that I want to stab somebody in the event that I need to. So it doesn't taste exactly like you associate the taste of candy these days. It tastes extremely molassesy. But I like it and I can see why it was popular at the time and I can see why the store lives on today if this was the popular candy. Mm -hmm. Nostalgia. All right, 
Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for joining us. And this little candy. Ye old pepper company. Yeah. We wanted to film in there, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, they have a limit of how many people can be in there. And there's people waiting. And the whole thing. Yeah. Hold them up. So. No, I didn't want Morgan to go back to jail here. No. Uh. I made it three whole days this time though, without needing bail money. That's true. And we had an influx of Karens. We can only reach my there. Karen quota. Get off the glass. We can't film here. Don't, don't take a picture of that tombstone. Get off the grass. You mean me? You can't sit on that ledge. Yeah, we got in a little bit of trouble here. And those were the innocuous things we did. <laughs> Uh, pick that up. That's not even my garbage, ma'am. You still need to pick it up, ma'am. Take it for me then. Because I don't have a trash can. Yeah. Why would I, was I have like, a trash Morgan, can? Morgan, let's go this way quickly. <laughs> I do it. And I did. I'm just going to let you know that I did. I did. I picked that garbage up barehanded and I walked right after her and I put it right in her hand. Don't ever tell me to pick up somebody else's random trash that is not mine. Exactly. Don't do that to Morgan. If you do it to me, I'll probably do it, but I'll be mad about it. I will it. pick up litter. Don't get me wrong. But I don't have a trash can. So where am I and supposed to put it? she doesn't want to be told to pick it up. Yeah. Anyway, enough about the Karens of this world. And if your name is Karen and you're a good person, I'm very sorry if yes. you got a bad rap. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Oh. Hello, operator? been waiting
Mrs. Lewis. You stay here.
got my worm again. Jeez. How many worms do you have? A dozen at least, but... Do they eat the dirt? No, yeah, they'll play with it, but it's just dirt, so... And, oh, excuse me. I hope you guys really enjoyed this movie. I love this movie, like I've said a few times before. Man, I jammed my finger. <laughs> and Was that when the fish was coming at you? No, no, it was yesterday. I was on the train and the train stopped suddenly while I was in the bathroom, Ooh. like really hard. I didn't want to fall like into the toilet because it was super gross. So I tried to catch myself and I like jammed my that finger. That would great. Oh, I wish we'd have that on. Yeah, I kind of wish too, but it was awful. It was truly oh, awful. Oh man, so I was at an event last weekend. Yeah. And you know, like we've seen those videos growing up of people turning porta potties over on other people. Uh huh. Finally saw it in real life. What? Did you get video? No, I didn't get video. Some place I couldn't take. I understand, but that would have been funny. Oh, it would have been. It was hilarious, but then it wasn't hilarious because then a lot of people got mad and. I had no part in it, and I was like, I'm not saying who did what. Do you know the other thing that I did yesterday? Hmm. So, I'm trying to be environmentally conscious. You know, I like to be, like, environmentally friendly, so I got these reusable straws. They're really cool. Actually, let me show you, because I'm super proud of this. It's going to be a whole thing, so hang on. I'm sure that it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain this. You'll have a visual. So, it looks like this. You unscrew it. And there's a straw in there and then this little brush so brush straw and like you can drink out of the mouth part of the straw and it's all good so and it has this little blue part in it they're great so I was at Baskin Robbins and I decided to get a milkshake and I was like I don't need a straw I have my fancy straw so we use my fancy straw then I was like, oh, I should clean it off afterwards. So I got up to go to the bathroom and the bathroom was closed. So they're like, it's temporarily closed. So I couldn't wash it off. I was like, fine, whatever. So this is the reenactment Morgan. I went like this to close it, to put it away, to clean yeah. later. And a bunch of milkshake came and it hit me in the face. <laughs> like right on the eye. I was just like, <gasps> and it was really embarrassing. <laughs> and everyone looked at me and I started laughing. You embarrassed? Come on. And it, yeah, so now I have to embarrass myself in front of many, many more people by telling this story publicly, but it was pretty good. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. Yeah. So now I know that the yeast straws, while environmentally friendly, are not the best for milkshakes. But anyway, about this movie. <laughs> movie was good. Hope you guys liked it. I actually really like the character of Nan. There's a lot of like kind of creepy characters in it. So I like the way that they portrayed it. I love Christopher Lee, of course. Oh, yeah. And Christopher I mean, Lee's like our buddy. Yeah, it's like when you see him, it's like seeing an uncle or something. You've just watched so many Christopher Lee movies and it, they're always good. And like I feel that way about Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, Boris Karloff. You're like, you feel like you know them at this point a little bit. And we also hope that you guys enjoyed our other adventures in Salem. So going around the hotel, Nathaniel Hawthorne history, of course, the House of Seven Gables, the candy shop, um, all the history that it had with Bewitched. Um, I think there's so much cool stuff there. We obviously could not even begin to cover everything in the short time that oh, we were right, there. Right about the candy shop. Yeah, the candy shop was good. We tried like retro candy. Pretty, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Molasses candy. I would actually get more of it. So, yeah, I think that it was really fun. It was really cool that we got to go there. Um, just even walking through the town and seeing all the houses was something like that just made our day. Like, we would just walk through and just... We would almost like window shop, like, oh, I would love to live there. Look at all the names, um, see all the cool people that were associated with these buildings. Everything's oh, yeah. old and cool looking. It's just, the style of the buildings just really got to me. I was like, this is just the coolest thing. Uh, Morgan, are you gonna catch another fish? Shh, shh, shh. He's coming. He's 
down there. Take it. There, see that fish right there? That yeah. long? Yes, that's a rock bass. Really? Yes. Well, I saw it. It didn't bite, but I did see it, and it did look different than the other fish. And I don't know what a rock bass is, but it did look different than the bluegills and stuff that she's been catching. And it came up just where you said. It lives down there, and it taunts me. But it does. You need a house soon. Morgan's being taunted by fish. I am. I'm going to get it. All right, Morgan, you yeah. want to say goodbye? Yeah, bye, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. Distracted with fishing. Yeah, it's her new obsession. So, so Morgan, when she gets into things, she'll get, like, way into things. Thank you. It's kind of cool, and it's kind of scary. So, it's fishing now, and it's neat because um, she really enjoys it. And it's therapeutic. I see like Yeah, do this. and the hooks are a lot smaller than the sharp objects she's normally messing with. So mm -hmm. I'll say it's a good thing. Come on, one more of the night. Watch the last, I bet, as soon as you turn that camera off. Well, anyway, as always, Morgan, we will text, text you, you soon. Soon. That's it. Yep. See? This fishing is. <laughs>